Dean, thank you. Here with me now is former CIA covert operations officer Mike Baker, who is also the founder and president of the intelligence and security firm Diligence. Now, I want to ask you, ISIS has claimed responsibility, said that they inspired this attack. Based right. on your knowledge, do you think that that's what happened? Well, <clears throat> there's two levels here. So you could argue, yes, from the 30,000-foot level, um, ISIS could claim responsibility. But in fact, Islamic extremism, jihadism can claim responsibility. Uh, from an operational perspective, were they pulling the strings? Do they have direct contact with this individual? It's highly unlikely that that's the case. So, I mean, again, from a theoretical perspective, and, and frankly, that's all that ISIS cares about. Right? right. They don't care whether they get some lost soul out there who is just looking to latch on to something. Well, or, that's what they or prefer they get a committed in some ways, right? Exactly. Yeah. 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 Especially in this kind of, we talk about these lone wolf style attacks. Mm -hmm. They put out these propaganda videos over and over again. They right. give people the, the idea of using a vehicle vehicle or a butcher knife, that type of thing. So in that way, it somewhat inspires It's them. a win for them. Okay. And we get lost here. We get lost in sort of the, the, the dialogue. We get lost in the, in the verbiage of, well, was he controlled? Was he directed? Was he? They don't care. And by they, I mean the extremists. They don't care what the reason is that somebody latches on to their, their beliefs or ideology. Uh, there is a potential. I mean, we, we, we talk about you know, how do you how do you detect this? How do you mm -hmm. how do you stop a lone wolf? You know, there has been this conversation about we've got to improve the vetting. Well, the honest answer, and it's unsatisfactory, is that you know additional vetting is not going to pick up somebody like this. What's going to pick up somebody like this is the hardest lift of all, which is getting someone close to him to pick up the phone and call the authorities. Well, and that's something you and I were just talking about. A lot of times in these cases, after the fact, everybody says, well, his behavior did change right. six months ago, a year ago, he started acting differently, but nobody does anything. Right, I know. It's, it's, the law enforcement is very frustrated by this, and they are working and have been working very hard at, at trying to establish better communications with the communities, the Muslim communities in this country. But the thought, I mean, imagine you're a mother, you're a father, you're a sister, a brother, and, and your, your relative is starting to behave strangely, uh, becoming uh, incredibly religious or stopping going to mosque, mm -hmm. which sometimes is an indication of a trigger. Absolutely. Uh, whatever it may be, think about getting them a level of trust so that they'll pick up the phone and call the, the local or state or federal authorities and say, I think we have a problem. We have to get there, but it's an, an Incredibly difficult process. Well, and sometimes in these cases, like within the Somali community, you have a language barrier, those types of things. You have to work that out. Right, too. a very insular community yeah. sometimes. Okay. But uh, again, law enforcement working on this. It's just that we have to be pragmatic. We also have to understand that we're engaged and we've been having this dialogue about ISIS, defeating ISIS, beating ISIS. And we have to do that. But we have to also understand that's one battle in this whole effort. It's not going to mean the end of extremism. It's not going to mean that somehow we no longer have to worry about individuals like right. this. That's they're going to be there. Yeah. All right, Mike Baker, thank you so much. Appreciate sure. it. Thank you.